Hey y'all, I just wanted to let you know that I made a small mistake where I say compassion goals rather than saying compassionate goals. Uh, I know it's this minor error, but I just want to let you guys know that I'm aware of it, so don't attack me. Okay, bye. Confidence is the key. Women are attracted to men who are confident. You have to be more confident to be successful. Here's 20 ways to be more confident. Visit my self-improvement conference that costs $2,000. Confident men are rarely impressed. Confident people have a good hairstyle. In order to be confident, you must be capable at everything. Confident people act like chads. <clears throat> Listen guys, I know for sure that every single one of you have heard these phrases. At least every single man who's watching this video right now. Don't even lie to me, okay? Because this is the main reason this video even exists. Oh yeah, I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Laiyosh. What's up? Today I'll be talking about how the advice people give about building confidence is kinda misguided. In this channel, I'll be discussing these interesting scientific and psychological information, so if you find this interesting, then please subscribe and enjoy. Now, I have to admit that having too little confidence is a problem in itself, but telling people to be more confident is actually a worse advice. It'll backfire if a wallflower tries to be the life of the party. And also, having too much confidence will lead to arrogance. Like most things in life, having the middle ground is the best option. And yeah, it is proven by many meta-analytic studies that having low confidence and low self-esteem tends to lead to depressive behaviors, so these people will need to find a way to up their confidence. But I'll talk about that later in the video. For now, let's talk about the extroverts, people with high levels of confidence and self-esteem. In this channel, I'm going to be talking about these interesting scientific and psychological information by implementing data from scientific studies. So if you find this interesting and want to watch more of my past and my future content, then uh, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to Life Study Library. Already did that? Alright, let's get going with the video. So what's going on with them? What's going on with the confidence beasts? What is wrong with them? Well, people who are too confident will become too full of themselves. People who are essentially cocky will stop learning from the past and prepare for the future. So yeah, both ends of the line has its own problem, and neither is the right way. So how should it be done, Yosh? You might ask. What's the right way for us humans? Well, like I said, the Goldilocks method, where you build confidence just enough so that you won't feel negative about yourself, but not too much to the point where you become arrogant. And I'm going to talk about what these people do in order to achieve the middle point. So the biggest common trait they share is how they set their goals. And I'm going to tell you how they do this. So normally, people will set a certain goal when they want to achieve something or uh, when they want to change and improve some aspects in their life. And people who are in the middle ground, people who have a moderate amount of confidence, they don't do this. People who are overly confident will tend to think like, I want to become this, I want to have this, it's all about the me, me part. And people who lack a good amount of confidence will also set a certain goal for themselves so that they can meet their needs or whatever they desire. This is called the self-image goal. Stuff like wanting to become more social around groups of people or wanting to get more attention from the opposite sex. Both types of people set goals to attain what they want. So how do you improve your life without being arrogant nor timid? A study from Seattle Pacific University, and I'm sorry, I should have mentioned this study earlier, but here you go. So it observed 47 male and female participants for over six weeks. And a side note that, while this is a very small sample, what's interesting about this experiment is that all the participants were clinically determined as anxious or depressed. These people were separated into two groups where the first group used the self-image goal, a method where they focus on themselves as they work hard to achieve something. And the second group used a different method called the compassion goal. This is a method in which the person works hard for someone else's sake. So this essentially applies to stuff like volunteering, or sacrificing your own benefits in order to work together as a group, or generally having positive influences on other people. And the result was that people who were assigned with a self-image goal had a tendency to have more conflicts among each other and themselves than the group that used the compassion goal. And it kind of makes sense, right? When you think about, oh, I don't like my body image, so I'll start working out so I can get fit. 
or I'm going to work hard so I can get a six-figure income by this age. It usually doesn't work out for many people. And don't get me wrong, they sure have the spirit to change themselves. They do have the mindset to improve their lives. But unfortunately for them, science concludes it like this. People who set goals for themselves and work on it to change themselves, improve only themselves, tend to fail on their journeys and will result in the backfiring of their depressive or anxious behavior. On the other hand, the group that worked on stuff with a compassion goal had an improvement on the same behavior, along with ways in which they managed group performance. And as much as I hate socializing, I have to admit that this is humanity's default setting. And it's really interesting because you can tell that humans are biologically built like this to support and be supported by others. It is also evident that the mere thought of working hard for other people's sake increases your blood pressure and has multiple positive benefits on your mentality and your physical functions. Also, this experiment further solidifies its findings by interviewing the participants' relatives or spouses about how they were doing after the initial experiment. And the answer from these people around the participants were the same. Those who worked on stuff by implementing self-image goal tend to result with a negative effect on their mentality, while those who used compassion goal had a significant improvement in their mental state and behavior. So to sum it up, the study proved that focusing on yourself in order to increase your level of confidence tend to result negatively and has no significant improvement on your mentality. So what people say about like focusing on yourself, building goals will improve your life so it'll make you more confident. Stuff like this you probably should not take it at face value. It's much more effective to focus on the betterment of others, working hard to help others, or contributing your energy for the benefit of the entire group or the society, and let the rising confidence come as a result of your action. My work, for example, is fully intended towards helping this society. I wanted to use the knowledge that I gained through my life and present it to the public to help people like you. And as a result, I feel happy and proud of myself by seeing that my work is appreciated by you. And because I'm always happy, negative energy does not phase me at all. So to people who's writing negative comments about me, uh, good luck with that. Uh, just letting it out there that your fruitless efforts will not get any recognition in my channel, so I recommend that you not waste your precious time in your life. You'll know soon enough what I mean, and it's going to be really fun for me. Alright, uh, but yeah, with all that said, I like to emphasize on the stuff that I touched at the beginning of the video about the common advice being told in public media. Stuff that is being said on the mainstream media. The common advice that these self-improvement experts tell you. Things like, you must be confident in order to be successful, which is not true at all. Like, you don't have to be confident to be successful. And while they don't usually say it like that outright, the emphasis is clearly visible. I mean, look at all public media. Confident people are glorified, are seen as attractive. And overall, it's doing a really good job into making people believe that being loud, big, aggressive, or dominant will get you whatever you want. And it's making you kind of wish you had these traits, which is all poo-poo. These oversimplified traits and advice are misguided, and it simply does not apply to the maximum number of people. I want people to be able to see this and pause for a moment before you apply any of these informations into your own life. I use scientific evidence and statistical support to make sure that whatever I'm saying applies to the greatest number of people possible. I have not and will never say that my claims are the truth. It'll have a good chance of applying to your life, but it may not. I'm a human being too, so I make mistakes sometimes. Sometimes. So I don't want you to take my words for granted. I want you to take me as one of the sources in your life and see if it fits your own character. If you feel like my words have value in your life, that's great. If you don't, that's also great. Okay, um, what else do I have to say? Oh yeah, uh, since I briefly talked about how overly confident people don't plan and prepare, this leads to that person becoming ambitious. And I've already talked about how being ambitious is not a necessary trait in my other video, so if you want to learn more about that, the link to that video is in my description, so check that out. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't, and tell me what kind of topics you're interested in hearing about. Okay, bye, thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video.